And it looks like that seven of Dalton DeGroff going to move up a couple of spots. A couple of drivers going to move to the back of the field. So that'll put Dalton DeGroff up there on pole position with Sean Osteen to his outside. Here they come. Speedy is going to give him the green flag. And we are underway. First heat race of the day as they charge into turn number one. DeGraff down on the inside, Osteen up on the outside, side by side. Top three rows still in pace formation as they fight for position. Who's going to lead lap number one? It'll be a drag race down the front straightaway. Give it to Osteen on the outside. DeGraff going to fight back on the inside in turn number one. Shorter way around now, down on the bottom. Osteen getting the momentum on the outside and getting a launch. Outside groove will work for a couple laps. You'll see most drivers fighting for the bottom if they can get there. Dead even again at the line, Osteen, just out ahead. Throw a blanket under the top four. Your point leader, Jimmy McLeod, going to break free into the fifth position. But he's dropped back a couple of spots now. DeGraff and Osteen still side by side for that top spot. Good racing from the top four. Saucerman in the second place point man. Car number 56 is battling with a 42 at Dustin Wilson for third. Jimmy McLeod back in fifth. Maybe in the catbird seat if things get interesting. Osteen continues to lead by a bumper bar up at the front of the field with four complete. Eight laps the scheduled distance here for the Crown Vicks and DeGraff. He's starting to get that inside momentum. DeGraff going to lead that lap. The outside groove is tough to make work over a long period of time here at Auburndale. Chance Saucerman stuck his nose down on the inside, got loose off turn number two. Going to two to go this time. Dalton the Groff in car number seven. Osteen up on the outside, still fighting. He has not been able to work down to that inside, but he's giving it a heck of a run on the outside. Still side by side for the top spot. Coming to the white flag, Dalton DeGroff out to the lead by a car length. Chance Saucerman going to stick his nose in there on the final lap. He wants second away from Osteen. Coming down to take the first checkered flag of the night. Dalton DeGroff in car number seven will win it. Osteen second, Chance Saucerman in third. Dustin Wilson in fourth. And Jimmy McLeod going to round out your top five as the rest of the field comes under the start finish line. Good little race there out of the Compassion Animal Hospital. Crown Vicks, we'll call that the mystery driver for now. We'll see if we can fill in that blank come feature time. That car just got here right before opening ceremonies, so we'll get that information when we can. So it'll be 10 cars here for heat number two. That should give us 19 come feature time if they're all able to survive. Great race in heat number one. And teammates up on the front row here for race number two. Eight laps of distance. Speedy looks him over, gives him the green. We're racing. Compassion Animal Hospital's Crown Vic heat number two underway. And the Farmery's machines up at the front. And Chris Rummel, kind of a 52 on the outside. He gets the jump. Brian Farmery, 88, digging on the bottom. Rummel on the outside. He should lead lap number one. They trade a little bit of paint coming down the front straight away. Chris Rummel knows how to get it done in this style of race car. Up on the outside, trying to drop down in front of the team car, Brian Farmery. Side by side for the lead. And three cars, single file. The mystery driver, car number 25, making his way up. No practice, no time on the racetrack. Started at the back and has worked up to sixth. So the mystery man up to sixth. Battle for the lead, still a good one. Side by side, look at the 27 coming through now. John Worthington passing the 95 of Lewis. Worthington up to third, loose off turn number two. And these guys losing touch with the leaders. The yellow and black Farmery sponsored rides. Chris Rummel in the 52, Brian Farmery 88. Rummel with the advantage right now. He's used the outside groove and still kind of running the middle groove through one and two. Getting that momentum off the corner and pulling away by two car links. Rummel out in front. Farmery back to second. And it's Worthington in the 27. Good run for Casey Lewis in fourth. And Dylan Stoner rounding out the top five. And here comes that mystery driver. A late arriving car number 25 up to sixth. 
Looks like that car has speed to break into the top five here if things go his way. Oh, we got one in trouble back straight away. Around is car number 71, Brian Temples. Going to light it up and keep it going. We will stay green for now with six laps complete. Two laps to go. He number two. A little spin there for Temples. He keeps it rolling. Leader's going to close in on him. White flag set to fly. Chris Rummel making it look easy on the outside of row number one. Casey Lewis trying to hang onto that fourth spot. Under fire from Stoner and the mystery driver. Checkered flag set to fly this time for the yellow number 52. Chris Rummel going to take home heat number two. Brian Farmer, he's second. And John Worthington, Casey Lewis, and Dylan Stoner will round out the top five. That's the mystery man. Tyler Akers, Clay Cruz going to hold off Jerry Lewis. And here comes Brian Temples to round out the field. Looks like Skip might uh, have to skip the heat race here as they push it into the infield. Bobby Rowland continues on. Angle out of Lakeland towards the back of the field. And another late entry. Car number 25. Another 25. Look, better late than never. So we'll add another one to the field here. You lose one, then you gain one. And we do not have that car registered, so we'll pick that up come feature time. Some of you out there probably know who it is, but you'll have to forgive me as we get set to go here for our SRQ Taxes Mini Stock Heat Race. Eight laps of distance, we're underway. And no surprise, TJ Cruz getting the jump. But Ganey got to fight back on the inside. Keep your eye on those station wagons. Toby Ganey, 42. Bray Ganey in the one. Good clean start. Mike Engel, the point leader, coming out of the back of the field in car number 17. High wide and handsome off turn number four. But it is Toby Ganey showing the way. Toby Ganey, the leader. TJ Cruz in second. Single file through most of the field as Mike Engel makes the pass on the 14K of Kirby Graham, who slipped backwards on the start. Bobby Rowland, his mod or his SRQ Taxes mini stock debut. You know, not looking too strong right now as he pulls to the infield. Ganey under attack now from Cruz. Cruz in the 14, Ganey in the 42. Toby Ganey continues to show away. Cruz looking to the inside. Ganey crowds him coming off turn number two. Cruz gets down to the bottom. Looking for the lead off turn number four. Ganey going to hang on to it by half a car length. Here comes Kearns in car number 69. William Kearns rolling towards the front. Kevin Grant in the 7G rounding out the top five. Tim Rushing brings the 80 to pit road. Car off the pace a bit, just going to save it for later. Ganey with a wobble off turn number four, and Cruz goes to the top spot. DJ Cruz in car number 14 to lead, and here comes Kearns. Kearns in car number 69, working his way up from the middle of the pack up into second as they're going to get two laps to go this time by. Two to go for TJ Cruz. William Kearns flying here as he tries to hit the afterburners. Kearns in car number 69 has closed in on the race leader. Time is running out, but he's right to the back bumper. White flag set to fly and battle for the lead heating up. TJ Cruz 14. William Kern, 69. Who's it going to be? A little dust kicked up in turn one and two. Final time down the back straightaway. Top two separating. Kern sends it in there. Gets to the back bumper, and he'll look to the inside off four. Drag race to the stripe. TJ Cruz will win it. Kern's his second. Toby Ganey, Mike Engel comes home fourth, and Kevin Grant going to round out the top five for the SRQ Taxes mini stocks. Some pretty good drivers throughout this street stock field. Keep your eye on car number 69. Normal track announcer Steve Darling going to roll off inside of row number two. He's got Mike Wilson to his outside as the field will be looking for green this time. Field is set, and we are underway for the street stocks. Their one and only heat race. Look at Joe Gerard. Oh, Joe's just going to take Steve out. So much for patience on lap number one. Steve Darling goes for the spin, and yellow flag is out. And Joe Gerard's nose all kinds of crumpled. Well, Joe, a little bit quicker pace off turn number two. And on lap number one, just going to turn Steve around. Now at 69, Steve Darling going to have plenty to talk about with us later on already. At this point, Steve may be rethinking his decision. And we're about to find out because we're looking for the green flag off turn number four. 
Archer on the gas, Trooper on the gas, and we're back underway. Field once again through one and two. Gerard giving Steve a little bit of space coming off turn number two that time. The top three breaking away. Outside groove starting to roll around car number 69. To the lead, it is the 68 of Jason Bartram. Here comes Wilson in the 05, rushing out of the back of the field. Car number 91, Tim Rushing scheduled to start second, elected the back of the field. And he's coming forward, but he's sideways off the corner, three wide down the front straight away. Steve the meat in the sandwich as the rest of the field scrambles right now. And Gerard, after contact on lap number one, has not been able to get behind the 69. Up front, though, it's still Jason Bartram. And 69 just falling into the hands of Steve Darling not too long ago, so still trying to get that car up to where it should be. Fades to the back. And his teammate, Jason Bartram, showing away, but Mike Wilson putting the pressure on on that 05 machine. Wilson's car almost looks like a sportsman at first glance, and he's putting the pressure on that 68 of Bartram. Oh, the 78 in trouble off turn number four, overheating, and it is spewing in trouble. Off turn number four, Gerard and Darling get into it. And this time, Steve is into the outside wall. Gerard is around. Don't know if they hit fluid off the 78. Rob Kuhn having issues with that beautifully prepared race machine. And then Gerard and Darling going to greet the folks over there in turn number four. So yellow flag is out. Can't go wrong with tacos. They have fried original or buffalo chicken sandwiches available. Homemade banana pudding. So if you want a nice snack and ooh, heavy damage to the Steve Darling number 69. Uh, cosmetic for sure. And they'll have to go look it over to see if there's any further damage. So tough break there for Steve. They have regular mac and cheese. They have buffalo chicken mac and cheese, barbecue pork mac and cheese. So if you like macaroni and cheese, we got you covered. But we're yes. glad to have you back up here. Yes, that was that was not fun. And um, that was a heat race. And we'll just leave it at that. It looks like Lauren was able to find another ride for the evening as her primary car having issues. So the field has shrunk down to six here. Started with 10. And we still have four laps to go. So about half the field trimmed down with half the race complete. We're back underway. Street stocks again heading into one. They light up the tires, but everything's okay as they come off turn number two. Wilson in the 05. Out in front, a little bit of contact there, perhaps with Bartram. They make a lot of contact. Oh, no, Wilson in the wall, Bartram in the wall. Yellow flag is out, and rushing is collected. We're not going to have any street stocks left. Out in front, a little bit of contact there, perhaps with Bartram. They make a lot of contact. Oh, no, Wilson in the wall, Bartram in the wall. Yellow flag is out. A lot of contact. Bartram into the outside wall. Wilson, he tagged the wall and came down and collected a Russian pretty hard there in the 91, then backs up into Lauren Lanier. Demolition Derby for the street stocks here on the front straightaway. Hopefully enough of them will be able to button up to put on a show for the feature event later, but we will wait and see on that. I feel bad for the 91 there. Tim Rushing, he started at the back of the field and was, excuse the pun, rushing his way up towards the front and got caught up in that mess. He had nothing to do with it, just a innocent victim. And now we're going to have a conversation here. Jason Bartram not happy with Wilson. Wilson pleading his case down there, and they will agree to disagree. Yeah, it looks like they're just going to send him on to the pits. Uh, officials have seen enough out of the street stocks tonight. So they send the rest of the field back. In, so I'm assuming that will hand things over to Cody Struble in the 19, but we'll wait official word on that situation. And there's what's left of the 05. Heavy left front damage on that machine. And the Jason Bartram 68 nose into the outside wall, so we'll see how bad the damage is there when they pull it off. But when it happened live, it didn't look good. So here we have the Pure Stock scheduled to come up next.
One to go. And next time by, we'll turn them loose. 11 of them signed in for our pure stocks today. Green flag set to fly for our treasure mark to Bartow Pier stocks. Green flag is out and running away. Ronnie Root down on the inside. Going to take over the top spot as they come off turn number two. Struble in the 19, fresh off the wild race in the street stocks. Jumping in the pier stock. And right now into the second spot. Oh, trouble around is the 410 machine artillery. And we'll see if he's able to keep it rolling as he backs into the infield off turn number two. Car does not refire. Yellow flag is out. Yellow is out here with two laps complete. Uh, Sean LeMaster fourth and the 03 Brandon Love. And correction, Brandon Love in the 03, not the 4 tonight, so that's my mistake. That is your second place point man. It is Bobby Mobley who's not in attendance tonight, the fourth place point man. Now here we go. Timmy Walters pulls the six car off as we are set to go back to green flag racing. Ronnie Root, Colt Cecil down into turn number one. Cecil with the push from LeMaster. And top four under a blanket as they go down the back straightaway. Close quarters action down into turn number one. Keep her on the 56, James Wright. He gets cut off by Brandon Love. So the top two in points there knows to Taylor. Here comes Alexander in the 63. Alexander trying to high side, but gets a little out of shape. Not going to make it work up there. Ronnie Root, car number 80, down on the inside lane. So hold on the lead. Cecil up on the outside. Sends it down into turn number three, trying to hold that momentum off the corner. Halfway home, four down, four to go for the Pier Stocks. Cody Struble, 19, looking at the inside of Colt Cecil. Cecil giving it a good run on the outside, able to really send it into the corners. Pulls even with Root, and down the straightaway is Root, able to hold on to the lead with Cecil with a good launch off turn number four. He's got a nose out in front. Colt Cecil in the 92 with a good run. Root fighting back on the bottom. Struble sitting back in third, waiting for something to happen. At the line, give it a cold Cecil by a fender. Root still working the bottom groove. James right now up on the outside, trying to work by Sean Masters number 15. Ronnie Root, door slams with cold Cecil as they come to the white flag. Final lap for the Pier Stocks. And who's it going to be? Roop on the inside. Cecil on the outside. Here comes James Wright. Struble thinking three wide. It's just a heat race, but they're racing like it's the final lap of a 50-lap main event. Coming to the checkers. Swapping paint. Ronnie Roop all the way to the wall. And Roop will win it barely over Cody Struble. Lots of contact coming to the line. And I don't think Colt Cecil's too happy about the way that one ended up. And he's going to let Ronnie Roop know about it big time. He's giving him the business back there. All the business. And that bright orange helmet helps tell the tale there. But, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear for Ronnie Roop. And Carnival 80 wins it by a fender. Coming to the checkers. Swapping paint. Ronnie Roop all the way to the wall. Again, this is the advanced four-cylinder class. And we'll give you the scheduled starting lineup here as the wrecker comes to assist Colt Cecil's number 92. Chuck Frazier in car number seven scheduled to roll off on the pole position. Jason Deaton in the 10 junior will start in the second. Black number zero for Kenny Yule to start third. Fourth of the 19 for Bobby Rowland. Again, it'll be Chuck Frazier in the seven. Jason Deaton in the 10 junior. That 10 junior is a pretty good little piece. That's the former eight machine that Dylan Reynolds would pilot on some of the tracks throughout the state. Uh, he'll be up against Chuck Frazier as they look for the green flag this time by. And we are underway for the Mod Minis. As they scream down into turn number one, it is Deaton in the 10 junior on the outside with half a car up out in front. 
Frazier going to battle back down on the inside. Top seven cars all bunched together as they complete lap number one. The drivers that were fighting for last under the pace laps continue to fight as Chuck Frazier has a big time lead going into turn number three. Everybody trying to beat that two machine for Nick Cummins. Ronnie Abney in the Dirty Bacon 64 machine sticking a nose to the inside of Kenny Ewell's number zero. Frazier the leader. Ewell second, Abney in third, rushing and Deaton fourth and fifth as Cummins currently rides in the sixth position but gonna break up into the top five down the back straightaway as he goes by the 10 junior. Chuck Frazier still the leader. Kenny Ewell in second, Ronnie Abney third. Keep your eye on the 2C, red and black 2C, Nick Cummins into the back of the 91 a little bit as they go into one. Russian able to hang on to it. Big lead for Chuck Frazier, biggest lead anybody's had all day. And already five laps complete for the Mon Minis. Bobby Rowland and Jason Deaton battling for position behind the top five competitors. Ronnie Abney with a big run into turn number three. Laps quickly winding down for the Mon Minis. Best battle is for sixth behind Nick Cummins, the point leader. Bobby Rowland, Jason Deaton battling for that position. Abney gets kicked to the outside. White flag is out for Chuck Frazier. And Abney slides back to fifth. Cummins up to fourth, rushing up to third. So a good battle for six with Deaton and Rowland. White flag is out for the last couple of competitors. Checkers fly for Chuck Frazier. He wins it easily. Kenny Ewell second, Tim rushing, Nick Cummins. And Ronnie Abney the top five. Then it'll be Bobby Rowland in the 19 ahead of a pair of tens. And the rest of the field will finish up here. So let's hear it for Chuck Frazier in car number seven. Go to patreon.com slash speedway video now. Cody, a great wheel man himself, and I think it's just helped John Guy. And we're getting ready, Steve, to drop the green flag for race number one. Lights are out on the track. Drivers clearing out their carburetors, pumping the brakes one last time, getting some heat in those brakes. And the green flag's going to fly as they come out of turn four. Guys, to the inside, they carry outside. Stickler quickly up to third. Closes the door on Neary back there in the fourth position as they go down the back stretch. This is your eye brakes. Tiptoe through one and two. Everybody's clean, and it's John Guy out with the lead. Here comes the team car, Cody Stickler. To the inside of TJ DeCare now for second. DeCare hung up on that outside and trying to fall back in line. He will in third. Single file through the top five. Single file as they come down the front stretch. John Guy. The big battle about ninth, tenth back is Love Lady. Now Almond trying to follow him on through, trying to get all single file to walk some laps early on. I'm going to keep my eye on car number 94, Keith Rogan. Fast in practice today. Oh, contact there with the 22 of Jonas. It's been an eventful last couple hours for Keith. We'll see if that car has speed in race conditions. Yeah, that 94 has no room for error with a car on the outside of it at all. So we'll see if we can get it single file now. And Jonas still stuck on the outside. Hunter Lovelady to the inside, number 68. Meanwhile, out front, it's all John Guy. Got a couple car lengths over team car. Robert Jonas finally able to find a place in line. Started six. He's drifted all the way back outside of the top ten. Been a tough start for Jonas. Up front, it's all John Guy out ahead of his teammate, Cody Stickler. TJ LeCare in third, Nick Neary fourth, and a gap back to fifth place, Dylan Bigley. Dylan Bigley right behind him has Carter Brown and Kendall Anderson with a good run. Hunter Lovelady and Cullen Allman with a little contact with Chase Lovelady. Lovelady, Lovelady a little bit off here tonight. Colin Allman still trying to find the speed. It's been a number of years since they've been here to Auburnale. And they're stuck middle of the pack right now behind the Anderson, number 29. Still single file through most of the field, seven laps in. Calm, cool, and collected. Now with eight laps complete. The battle's really shaped up for the fifth position right now, Ryan. You've got Bigley right on the back bumper of, or you've got Bigley on his back bumper. He's got a mirror full of Carter Brown and Abigail, or I'm sorry, uh, Anderson, Kim Anderson. A little bit of contact. They stack up all four. Brown gets the shuffle from the 29 to Anderson. Anderson now wants sixth. We saw a big gap back to Bigley, and then the field was stacked up. That usually is an indicator that somebody's holding up that half of the field. Bigley, though, able to get some separation. Here comes Lovelady making his way by the 11 of Brown. Brown fading on the outside. 
Yeah, he gets stuck on the outside early on, and it's pretty much dropping the anchor now as Holman's trying to make it good for him. And right behind that, watching the battle of Ian, Ray Holmes, number 57. Carter Brown, the 11, able to find a hole in line behind the 67 of Allman. Ray Holmes in the 57, finally getting some momentum going, but struggling a bit here tonight. He'll look for a way by the 11 car. Field back single file. It is all 42 is at the front. John Guy leading 142. Cody Stickler settling into second. 13 laps complete. Battle for position further back in turn three. Jonas took a peek to the inside of Hunter. Well, ready enough to do it. This time by 14 laps up on the scoreboard. And Nick Neary starting to get up on the wheel. He's closing the back bumper of TJ DeCare's white number 88 machine. DeCare, final spot on the podium, trying to hold off a hard charging Nick Neary. They've got a ways back to Dylan Bigley, who's under fire from Kendall Anderson. Anderson giving a good run to car 29 tonight. So we've got a couple two car battles. Uh, second, I'm sorry, third and fourth, fifth and sixth. And then a big gaggle. At four cars racing for what is the seventh position. And here comes Brett Holmes speaking of the inside of Carter Brown. Brown going to hold off that charge for now. Roggin settles in behind them and won't be long before we hit the tail end of the field. Weaver's number 11, final car on the lead lap, only half a straightaway ahead of the leaders. So the field's getting a little strung out, which I don't think is necessarily a bad thing. Doesn't happen too much here at the bull ring, and it's good to log some laps early on. Now what you want is a pretty calm first race so that everybody's able to make it for race number two. Because usually if they all make it to race two, things get kind of crazy. Well, we've got 18 laps in the books. John Guy continuing to lead in the green number 42, black and green machine. Round out of the inside of Allman. These two continue to battle for position. Trade paint off the corner. Allman out of Plant City, Florida. Carter Brown out of Lakeland, Florida, side by side. That battle is for the 10th position. Final spot there in the top 10. That's the best contested position on the racetrack. And they put a lap on the Weaver number 11. Brown still on the inside of Colin Allman. Been a struggle here this weekend for Allman. Made wholesale changes after practice last night. And it worked for a little while, but now he's under attack from Brown. And here comes Ray Holmes. Holmes in the red 57 looking to the inside. Weaver going to pull off right in front of Bigley. Weaver shuts down, pulls into the infield. 22 laps complete, just a few away from halfway. Make it 23 laps complete as John Guy streaks by the start finish line. Best battle on the racetrack between Robert Jonas, 22, and 68 Hunter Lovelady. That is a battle for about the 12th position. Yeah, four cars now battling for that spot. Jonas ahead of Lovelady and the 97 of John Nutley. Halfway. Halfway this time by 25 down, 25 to go. Good lead right now for John Guy. Pretty comfortable over Cody Stickler in the 142. TJ DeCare has been able to hold off the 17 and Nick Neary for the fourth spot. Bigley hanging on the fifth. Then you have Kendall Anderson, Chase Lovelady, Carter Brown, Bray Holmes, and Colin Allman rounding out the top 10 right now as John Guy comes by, completes lap number 27. Clean and green for the late models so far. John Guy stretched out to about a one second lead on Cody Stickler in the number 142. Pretty soon, Steve, they're going to catch the tail of the field, which uh, is actually pretty big. You got the 11, 97, 68, 22, all right there. Whoa, 97. For last place, right? Yeah, you don't want to be 15th right now. Nutley with a big handful of steering wheel coming off the corner. And he fades back to that 15th spot. 15 of the 16 starters still on track and on the lead lap. Side by side, Carter Brown making his way around. Love Lady, Chase Love Lady. Looks to be off the pace a little bit. Dropping in the number eight car on the outside. Second place point man got drop kicked to the outside lane that lap, and he's drifting back to around the 10th position here as Roggin tries to close in. Car number 11, though, Carter Brown, he faded. Whoa, Roggin up the track. All kinds of action going on now. Brown's car starting to come back to life a little bit, Steve. Carter Brown is just making, I believe, his third Super Late Model start. One of our pro truck drivers, 2022. Auto Injury Pro Truck Champion here at Auburn Elsewhere. 
With all that going on, battle heating up for second. Young TJ DeCare closing in on the back of the 142 of Cody Stickler. Your leader, John Guy, gets by the John Nutley number 97 car and puts a little bit of space reading the leader DeCare all over the back of Cody Stickler. TJ DeCare not afraid to give it to the veterans as we've seen throughout the season. Starting to get on that back bumper of Stickler as they go through out of traffic. Making his way around Nutley, the lap car. Nigari's going to make his way around as well for the fourth position. Ryan, we're coming up on lap 35. I don't want to say it out loud. I don't want to jinx it, but we got 35 now. 15 to go. 15 to go, all clean and green. There's been a lot of good racing, great battles throughout the field. But for the most part, everybody keeping it clean as Colin Holman throws it sideways off turn number four. Tires starting to heat up. Desperation starting to settle in with just 14 circuits to go. They go by in a hurry. Hunter Love, lady. I don't know if there, anybody's going to catch up to the 42 of John Guy. He's been on point all day long. Best battle on the racetrack. Jonas gets kicked up. Jonas might have a problem. Car number 22 brings it to the infield. Just ahead of the hard left. Stickler is the fastest car on the track right now with a 13 457. And he's running out of laps. That's the problem. Car is fast, but has to make up nearly half a straightaway on the team car. So two similarly set up race cars running one, two right now. And that's bad news for the rest of the field. Field's coming around. The speed is going to show them 10 fingers this time. 10 laps to go. Double high fives from Speedy down there on the flag stand. John Guy showing the way. Cody Stickler second. TJ DeCare third. Not much change inside the top five. A lot of the battles have been around the 10th position tonight. As drivers have settled in without the aid of a yellow. Nobody's really been able to make up much ground. 11 of Charlie Brown off the speedway. So three cars falling out. 13 still run with nine to go. Boy, John Guy catching the fastest car from practice in the heat of the day. Just got to wonder how much damage was done to the Keith Rogan 94 when he scrubbed off the wall twice in qualifying. Rogan being shown the move over flag. The rest of the field trying to make their way around that. And don't look now, but the 142 Cody Stickler is closing in. Oh, but he gets into it with Keith Rogan there on the front straightaway. It gets real tight down these straightaways when they're side by side. A little contact with Allman and Bray Holmes further back in the field. As we're coming up to just five laps to go, has Stickler saved his stuff for these last five laps? Is it go time for the 142? Oh, it's definitely go time no matter what you got. Laps are uh, winding down. Trace has that green flag feel to it. They're coming to four to go. Just four laps, one mile left in this contest. Stickler was able to close in as they caught the 94 of Roggen. Clean air once again for John Guy. He pulls back out in front. And now just three laps to go. Three laps remain. John Guy, the point leader, looking to pad that point lead. Hunter Lo or Chase Loveready, I'm sorry, stuck towards the back half of the top five right now, just inside the top ten. So John Guy, with two to go, looking to pick up a ton of points tonight. Two to go, Field still making their way around Nutley one more time. The race is going into turn three and four. Your leader coming out of turn four with the white flag in the air for John Guy, the 42. Stickler in second, TJ DeCure third. Running out of time, I don't think they're close enough, Steve. Coming off turn number four to win, twin 50 number one. Give the checkers to John Guy in car number 42, just ahead of his teammate, Cody Stickler. TJ DeCure comes home third. Nick Neary fourth, and Dylan Bigley runs out the top five with a good run. Yeah. Lyman, out of this car, your feature winner, John Guy, in the number 42 for the Sunoco Southern Race Fuel Super Late Model. John, you made it look easy, but I'm sure it wasn't in the seat earlier. And you come home with a teammate right behind you, which I'm sure is a satisfaction for the team. Yeah, really, it's my crew chief. He makes this car literally drive like a Cadillac. If it wasn't for him, my mom, my dad, all my sponsors, all you fans, if you don't show up, short track racing will die. We appreciate everybody coming out. Hope we can put on a really good show for the second 50. Grandma and grandpa. And I want to thank my papa and my grandma very much for everything they do for me. 
John Guy in a good solid run. We'll see it maybe later tonight. It's hot behind the wheel of these race cars, and this driver is hot no matter where he goes. Well, Cody, you and John, when you guys are both out here, you guys are the class of the field here at Auburndale. What did you need to beat your teammate tonight? Uh, I don't know. Maybe a little more turn, a little more drive off. He's definitely fast here. Uh, maybe we can go work on it and try to get a little better here for the next 50. Well, you got 50 more laps coming up. And How much did you use up your stuff? Were you saving towards the end there, or were you trying to go up there and take the win away from him? Uh, I was definitely saving a little. You know, I figured he pretty much had that one in the bag, so definitely want to have something left for the next 50. Yep, that's important. Got to use the same tires and everything. Who would you like to thank for the second-place finish here tonight? Uh, Rex and Collette guy, they uh, do all this, make this happen, Pops. Uh, Bill, he helps out, Corey, and then Rick Connett for making them fast. Folks, keep your eye on Cody Stickler in race number two. He will be a threat. We're going to send it over to Steve, who's caught up with our third place finisher, TJ DeCare. These guys kind of checked out front, and, but you were doing everything you could to stay right there with him. Yeah, we made a last minute adjustment, and uh, I think it was just the wrong, uh, the wrong decision, but I'm pretty good for the second race. Congrats to John and Cody. Uh, uh, Mr. Rick and X put all three cars in the front stretch, so it's pretty good for him. And uh, Auburn Dale always put on a good, uh, great show, and thank you, for the thank you for the interview. Congratulations. Hopefully we'll see you again later tonight. TJ DeCare with a you know, solid third-place finish. Go to patreon.com slash speedway video now. Shocking on the field will be Brian Temples in car number 71. That's how they're scheduled to line up. A couple of the drivers going to the back, but we are set for 25 laps. Chris Rummel, one of the top drivers in this class, up on the pole with his teammate right behind him. Always exciting, Compassionate Ammo Clinic, Crown Vicks. Next week they're going for 40 laps around here, so this might be a test for a couple of the teams this week. They're gonna get the green flag on the exit of four right where the cone is. Green flag is in here. Speedy showing him. Chris Rummel with a good start out front. Sat battle right now for second, side by side. Farmery inside, the Groff outside. It's a drag race as they go down the back stretch. Oh, we got Acres getting sideways. We got the 71 sideways off turn number two. And they both gather back up. Chris Rummel will lead lap number one as the rest of the field comes down the front straight away. Still the battle for a second is side by side down the back stretch. Sean Osteen in the fourth position. Just kind of wait to see what's going to happen with those second and third place cars. Like Tyler Akers towards the back and a little how you do from the four. Lewis Trump popped open for a minute. And we're three wide on the front straight away. Casey Lewis gets a shove. Everybody keeps it straight. Two laps complete, all clean and green. Oh, as I say that around is one car. I think it's the 95 of Lewis off turn number two. Casey Lewis with a spin and the yellow flag is out. Caution out for the 95 of Casey Lewis. Got to wait and see what the official call is on that. Yeah, Lewis was the one getting shoved around here on the front straightaway, and it looked like that continued all the way down through the corners. And Lewis able to refire. So even though he tapped out, showed the sportsmanship, he's still got to follow the rules. Yeah, he's going to tuck in behind the 27 of Joe Kleitz. So up front, if you're listening to us on track two, the field's making their way into turn three. We'll get the green flag on the exit of turn four from Speedy R. Flagger. Chris Rummel looking for that green flag. He sets the pace off the corner. He mashes the gas, and we're back in the way for the ground picks. DeGroff, Bradenton, Florida driver, trying to fight on the outside. Side by side, Osteen right behind him. Farmery to the inside behind his team car of Rummel. Front half of the field all packed together. Then everybody else that was single files fighting for a position. Wolfingers falling backwards now on that outside lane. Good battle up front between DeGraff and Chris Rommel. Here comes Osteen into the mix in Carver 22 on the outside, shoots into the third spot. The battle right now for fifth side by side, Worthington inside. It's awesome here bouncing off the wall. Yeah, Chance gets the piece of the concrete coming off the corner. He's able to hang on to it. One car to the infield. Everybody keeps going. That's opening the door for another Bradenton, Florida driver, Dustin Wilson, making a move in the number 42. Wilson trying to move forward. Saucerman still stuck on that outside lane. Wolfhanger, oh, look out front straight away. Car number three is in trouble. And all the way into the infield they go. Watch out for the lights. Wolfhanger had a handful of steering wheel there running all the way down the front stretch. Boy, that was a wreck that took half a straightaway to actually happen. As those cars made contact. Uh, you know, I mentioned the three coming to that restart. He got a bunch of positions on the choose. And it's all gone out the window now as he spun down on the infield in turn one. You know, it's the kind of action we get out of the Crown Vicks. You're going to want to come back and see them next week, and they're going to go 40 laps for a big payday. 
Yeah, we put them early on the schedule tonight, but next Saturday night we may put them last once again just because they, they do tend to put up quite a bit of dirt here on the track. And we've got the Southern Sprint Car Series sprint cars next week, so they can't have any dirt on the track. Well, from what I've seen tonight, a lot of classes put dirt up on the track. We're going to go green as the field's making their way into turn one and two. Let's try this again. Rummel out in front. Osteen behind him. That could get interesting. Osteen's not afraid to use the bumper. And he's got a fast race car himself. So here we go. Off to number four this time by Green Flag back in the air. Rummel and DeGroff side by side down into turn number one for the race lead. Field sets off sail into turn two coming down the back stretch. Osteen looking to the inside, trying to put his nose to the inside, but still side by side in front of him. Three car breakaway coming off the turn number four. Big time battles throughout the second half of the field. Top three though under a blanket. It's Rummel the leader. DeGroff on the outside slipping backwards. Here comes Osteen into the mix in car number 22. Sean Osteen in that black and green 22 rod right in the bottom. Looking to get a run on Chris Rummel here down the front straight away. Rummel continues to show the way and as the field scrambles from about fifth on back. Osteen tucks down behind Chris Rummel. DeGroff right behind him. Now single foul. From about back to 7th, 8th place position. Oh boy, one car to roll hard. That is the 42 machine. Dustin Wilson pancaking it off for. Bumper tag with McLeod. Sauceman and DeGroff pulls to the infield. Third, third place car. Third place car, Dalton DeGroff makes a hard left. That's a brand new car he was trying to shake down for next week. Whoa, there goes McLeod and Wilson going around in turn number four. Wilson going to get the worst of it. Whoa, and almost gets taken out for his troubles. Those calls there, Ryan, are always exciting to watch back and look back on Speedway video, especially when they hear you in slow motion. Whoa! Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> listen, when, when stuff happens, I get into it. Not going to lie. Good to have uh, our good buddy, Mr. Tom, from Speedway Video in the house recording the videos off weekend for us over at our home track so glad to be here thanks again for having us to be a part of this great event here this is our little home away from home it is Dalton DeGroff back in it only eight laps complete just about a third of the way through so keep your eye on car number seven com coming from the back yeah, I'm That's sure his uncle Dennis Wilson was working feverishly back there to get that car back out there well you saw the sense of urgency to get that car back to the pit so you knew they were going to try and they make it in the nick of time as we're set to go back green flag race Green flag is in the air. Rummel again with a good start in the number 52. 22 on the outside. Not quite side by side this time. The advantage is Rummel. We'll see if Osteen slides back to the inside. There's a hole behind Rummel. He gets down to the inside and now we'll go to work on the back bumper of car number 52. Dalton McGroff trying to make his way back up through the field but that car appears to be in trouble yet again sideways as the 34 gathers it back up and for the lead in turn three battle for the lead osteen to the inside of rummel rummel open the door osteen said don't mind if i do coming off the wall now a lot of action all throughout the field this is why this particular type of class is gaining a lot of momentum in the state and really around the country these guys battle hard in these big old v8s Rumble up the racetrack, goes to the inside, Saucerman sideways behind all them. Action everywhere. Osteen and Rummel still side by side, door to door for the race lead down the back straightaway. Rummel with a head of steam into three. Oh, Rummel trying to make that outside work. The shortest way around obviously is the inside, but Rummel's got a three wide. We're going deeper in the field, it's going into turn three. Tyler Akers, Dustin Wilson, and Lloyd Freeman. Rummel continues to lead as the rest of the pack scrambles for a position. Osteen sticking their nose in there. Rummel shuts the door in three, back out in front, but he drifts wide. Rummel is coming up high off the corners, but that's where he gets all his momentum. Yellow is out around his Tyler Akers in two. Tyler Akers, one of our young, I believe 13 or 14 year old mini cup drivers. So it's, it's a little bit different getting in one of these cars from the mini cups. But I, I used to get confused, Steve. In my track, we did halfway at 12 on a 25, and I would ask why. And it's in case they missed it the first time, they had lap 13 to throw the cross flag. So Always room for error. Leave yourself room for error. That's right, especially in short tracks. Now here we go. Set to restart. 
A lap short of the halfway point. Chris Rummel, your leader on the inside. Half a lap short of halfway. To, to be precise, yes. Here we go. Green flag going to fly once again. Rummel, the leader on the inside. Osteen on the outside. we got cars everywhere going in the turn. Everybody's going to make it through. I can't even call that. We had cars everywhere. Man, the, the restarts are just insane, and then it just stacks up here off turn number four. Rummel still out in front. They're two and three wide coming at us here down the front straightaway. Osteen still wound up on the outside. Keep your eye on Bubba Healy. He's number 25. He's boxed in behind Chance Saucerman, who's been pretty defensive up there in the fourth spot. Osteen back in line. Rummel sideways. Osteen to the inside. It's back on at the front. Side by side going into turn one. Rommel able to get, put the power down on the outside there. A lot of... Oh, trouble. We got one around. Looks like the 34 machine has gone around again. Tyler Akers got a handful wheel there in turn two, but it looks like we're going to stay green. Lloyd goes around there in the 34, and we do stay green. Osteen back on the inside. Rommel on the outside. What a great race. I mean, this class, a lot of people watch it for the beating and banging, but they put on a great show. Battle for the lead still side by side. Osteen on the inside. Rummel on the outside. Give that lap to Rummel by about, oh, half a fender. It's going to come down, shape it up to be a real good finish side by side if they stay like this, Ryan. Well, if it stays like this for the next nine or eight laps, it's going to be wild. At the line, Rummel all the way to the wall. He leads that one. Rummel's led just about every lap, and now he's getting loose. He slides up high. Osteen is cleared out of the back straightaway. New race leader for car number 22, Sean Osteen. Rummel washed up, and he comes right back on the attack. Don't count out the 52. Caution on the track. Wilson oh. stopped on the exit of turn two. Mysteriously, is able to continue on now. Now the cure of the yellow flag. Wilson able to continue, and that's going to set up another restart with 17 laps complete. So we're officially past the halfway point now. Looks like a right rear tire flat, we're told, on car number 42. And we'll see if the officials are going to make a call for him drawing the yellow. He's going to try to take it back behind the wall and put Dennis Wilson to work once again on one of his team cars. And there you see it flapping behind the numeral there. So they'll take that car pit side. It's going to be scores going to have quite their hands full next week. Looks like the 42 of Wilson is going to tag the tail end of the field, making his way back out. He's going to need probably another caution, though, to get that choose cone to get some track position. Now we are set to go. Just the distance of a heat race left, but with the action we've seen, could be a while. Here we go. Green flag back there, and Osteen doesn't get going. Inside lane gets the jump. They play bumper tag behind Osteen's 22. The farmery cars get the jump on the inside, and we're stacked up in turn one. Everybody keeps it straight. That could have saved Osteen there, but we're going to stay green. And it is all Chris Rummel at the front. Biggest lead he's had all day. Don't look now. Rummel's team car is number 88 right there in second position. Brian Farmery, rookie last year, getting better and better every race. I also don't look now. Here comes that seven of DeGraff back into the mix now. Oh, and behind him goes the other number seven. We got him spinning into the infield. That is the Dylan Stoner, number seven. He grabs a gear, keeps going. We stay green. Still side by side for second. Farmer on the inside, Osteen on the outside. And it's all Chris Rumble at the front with five to go. Five last to go. Speedy showing them just a high five. And I'm looking all throughout the field. They are still trying to wreck everywhere. Lewis off into the infield. Gathers it back up. Osteen powers up on the outside for second. Makes contact and forward. He's sideways. Third place man sends it around in front of Bubba Healy. Oh, and he thought about gassing it up. And the yellow is going to come out. There it is. The team car to the leader, Chris Rummel, going to evaporate the big lead. And uh, I don't know about you, Steve, but the way they were racing, it's just a matter of time. Yeah, we're going to have to see what the official call is here. It's Quite a bit transpired there. Nobody tapped out both cars to the back of the field. That is the call from race control. Still a lot can happen here in this one. If you listen to us on track two, the field's making their way back down the back stretch. We're going to get the green flag on the exit of turn four here. Go is on our flagger. They cannot go until he drops the rag and hit the loud pedal. Speedy at the ready. He drops the green flag. Pretty even start this time. 
Aggression picking up in turn number one. Field stacked together off turn number two. Rummel still with a nose out in front. Osteen gonna try to slide into the second spot. He's gotta shut that door quick because here comes Chance Saucer into the 56. Rummel back out in front. Four laps to go. Rummel, Osteen, Saucerman, DeGroff trying to make a move on Saucerman. Saucerman closes the door. I believe DeGroff may be setting him up though for his move here. Oh, Chance gets loose. He's sideways. He gets the bumper out from Dalton DeGroff. Battles on for third. Top two breaking away at the front. Rummel leads. Osteen trying to get a run. It's going to be between the 52 and the 22, it looks like. Saucerman able to fend off the seven. Spin. It's the 34 once again. And let's see, Yellow comes out. Yellow is out, showing two to go. And look out. Tyra Rub coming off the 42 of Dustin Wilson as well. This is, that battle for third was just shaping up and the caution comes out, unfortunately. That's, that's how it's been most of the night. We get a good battle for the lead or battle for position up front, yellow flag. It's been yellow fever in the second half of the pack. Second time for Lloyd Freeman to go around in car number 34. Keep your eye on the 04, new player in town. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised to grow off in the, go back to the third position inside, or the third row inside instead of outside second row. Yeah, I feel like he probably could have gotten around Chance Saucerman, maybe for the third spot, been in the catbird seat if the leaders get into it, but maybe he's going to prove us wrong from what would be the fifth position on a traditional restart. Green flag is in the air. Boy, he had a chance to get to the bottom. Saucerman getting sideways. Here's DeGroff. We got the 27 of Joe Kleitz around. He's able to refire and pull away. Kleitz getting it up to speed right now. A great restart for Chris Rummel. He does not want to see another one of those yellow flags. He's got a two-car length lead on the 22 of Osteen. Top four, single file. The best battle is for fifth and around. Goes Akers off two. See if he can get it, keep it going. He is able to keep it possibly going. Starter grabbing for the yellow flag. He's still sitting there broadside, and yellow is out. Yellow is out once again with 24 laps on the scoreboard. Akers sitting in a bad spot. Leaders were catching Joe Kleitz. Oh, boy. It's going to set us up for a green-right right checker. Naturally. That's what this race was destined to come down to. Or he just decided, hey, last time I wasn't going to win it from fifth with five to go, so probably not going to win it from fifth with two to go. He'll be on the outside of row number two. Jimmy McLeod back to the inside of row number three. So we flip-flop those guys and, you know, get ready to settle this one with a green-white checkered here for the Crown Vix at Auburndale. Field is looking for the green flag. They've got it. Good restart this time for both drivers. Rumble, yellow car down on the inside. Osteen, the black machine on the outside. Rumble with half a car length as they come off two. Down into turn number three. Can Osteen win it from the outside or will he find a hole to the bottom? Coming around to the white flag. DeGroff went real high on that. Going to give up a couple positions. Sean Osteen trying to get a run. He's got a run. Look at the 22. Final time down the back straightaway. He's right to the bumper of Rumble. Final time into three. Osteen going to cut to the inside. Here they come for the checkers. Give it to Chris Rumble on the 52. Osteen and Saucerman. It will be second and third. And the rest of them scramble to the finish. John Worthington fourth. In the number 19 car uh, finished lap. Last, only uh, completing three laps here. Send it down to trackside to uh, my colleagues, Steve and Orion tonight. Well, folks, he's already out of the car down here. Chris Rummel, the winner of the Compassion Animal Hospital's Crown Vicks feature tonight. Chris, come on over here. Good to see you back here at Armandale in Victory Lane. Felt like you won this thing about six or seven times with all those restarts. Yet, how were you able to hold off Mr. Osteen there on the outside all those times? Um, I'm not sure. Sean had a really good car, and I thought for sure he, he definitely had my work cut out for me. So uh, there's a couple times he got underneath me. We had some good side-by-side -side racing, never even touched, and uh, it was a lot of fun, I'll tell you that. Uh, look, it was definitely fun for us to watch. And You say it's fun. You sure it wasn't frustrating with all those restarts? Uh, the cautions got a little bit annoying, but that's part of the game. So, I mean, just got to keep going and keep trying and keep pushing. Next week, we've got a big race out here for the Crown Vix. Are you setting your sights on uh, that race as the man to beat next week? Uh, I, ho I hope we're competitive. I know there's a lot of fast Vix in this uh, class now, and they're getting better and better. So uh, I'm just fortunate enough to get this one this week. Well, congratulations on the big win tonight. Do you have anybody you'd like to thank? Oh, yeah, everybody behind me, Brian, Tammy, Lily, Georgie, my girlfriend, my mom back home, uh, Florida Green Fertilizer, Merrill Brothers, 
the Coastline Plumbing, uh, Congress Chiropractor, Tampa Bay Logistics, uh, Farmer's Garage, everybody lays a hand, so I couldn't do it without them. Folks, let's hear it for Chris Romer, Crown Vic winner, and we'll pass it over to Mr. Steve with our second place finisher. Yeah, I got Sean Osteen back here with a hard fought second place finish. Tried the outside a couple of times, inside, really had this thing set up on the outside tonight. Yeah, it was handling good on the outside. Usually it doesn't work that good here, but uh, I didn't give Chris the win. I tried everything I could. Um, yeah, just could, didn't have enough. A lot of cautions, too. Yeah, who do you want to thank? Helps you get here tonight. Uh, all my sponsors, Osteen's Load and Go, uh, Boss Lady Creations, Sarger Family, the Rommel Family, uh, the Wilson Family, everybody that puts a hand on the car. Appreciate everybody. All the fans for coming out. Uh, Auburndale Speedway. Hopefully we'll see you back next Saturday night, maybe one spot better. Chance Sosserman, great run for you tonight. You had a great seat for all those restarts, and you're right there in the thick of things all night. Congratulations on a great run. Thank you, thank you. I want to thank all my sponsors. I want to thank Jimmy McLeod, Shane Bennett, my girlfriend, um, FS Flooring Unlimited, um, Brad Frazon, Care Express Lane, Mobile Detail, and Deep Blue Flooring, and all my fans and all my family that come out and support me. Got a big race out here for this class next week. What's it going to take to beat everybody in 40 laps? Um, staying out of trouble. Staying out of trouble. Well, that was hard to do tonight, so hopefully you can do it next week. Chance, congratulations on a great run. Thank you. Chance Sosterman brings it home third. Let's hear it for him one more time. And hey, let's hear it for Chris Rummel hanging on to win that thing. SRQ Taxes Mini Stocks coming up next. Go to patreon.com slash speedway video now. Wayne Donovan Jr. in the number 19. And actually, it looks like that uh, 58 car for Skip Lawrence didn't make it back out. He had problems on the pace laps of the heat, so he's not going to make the call. But we did pick up the 19 for Wayne Dunavant. So, field is set. SRQ Taxes Mini Stocks getting ready to go. Station wagons have been fast, but TJ Cruz up on the pole. Going to be tough to beat himself. Here we go. Green 25 laps. in the air. TJ Cruz, Wayne Kearns, front row, Toby Ganey, and... Mike Engel for the second row. Well, these little four cylinders hauling the mail through turns one and two. It's Cruz down on the inside, Kearns on the outside. Throw Ganey and Engel into the mix. Good little group there in the front of the field to battle for the top spot. Kearns trying to make it work on the high side, but he slips back. TJ Cruz out in front. Kearns got a mirror full of Toby Ganey trying to take over the ride from his brother Bray Ganey, the championship car from last year. Cruz in the 14, kind of missed the apex of the corner that time. And now here comes William Kearns in that 69. Kearns closing in on our race leader. Top four, make it top five cars all there together as they come off turn before. Cruz, Kearns, Ganey, Engel. Cruz, a little bit of dirt there. Yeah, I got They're coming quick up on Dunavant. Dunavant slow on the top of the track. And, oh, big-time slow car. They have to change lanes as he stays up high. Kearns with a nose to the inside but falls back in line. Donovan way up the racetrack lets the rest of the leaders go. Yeah, really the top eight, nine cars all nose to tail right now. Kearns has company. Here comes Ganey to the outside. All the way to the wall in four. Kearns hangs on the spot. Engel actually takes over third. Yeah, Ganey tried to make it work on the outside, open the door up for points leader Mike Engel coming off his fourth season victory last week battle for the lead well, Kern right. sends it what a move there for Kearns and it's going to work I think he caught TJ Cruz by surprise Cruz had to get up on the wheel and turn back down the racetrack and he's now drop kick to the outside angle the point leader rolls up to the second position now Kearns got a meal full a beer full of young Toby Ganey and Bubby Healy a lot of cars throwing a wheel off into the dirt through the corners trying to Hook that asphalt almost to help the car turn. And it's a two-car breakaway. William Kern, 69, has got the top spot, but here comes Mike Engel in car number 17. Contact further back for third. Cruz hangs on to it. Ganey now under attack from Bubba Healy's blue, number 25 machine. Bubba Healy makes the pass. Ganey tucks in front of Cole in the number 61. And bumper tag throughout the field as they lap around Bobby Rollins, number 18. Bobby will do a little bit better in the Mod Mini here in a little while. Three wide for a moment. Bobby goes away up the track to let the leaders go. And up front it is still William Kearns, but here comes Engel in the 17. He's had to start deep in the field tonight in both the heat and now in the feature. 
And he's starting to roll forward with nine laps complete. Battle on for third. Here comes Bubba Healy. Healy in the blue 25 all over the back of the 14. Got a pretty good battle shaping up for the sixth position break game. And another station wagon has caught Cole Gunter in the 61. Side by side battle with that one and 61. Kevin Grant from Pinellas Park right behind him. Grant trying to make something happen now on that beautiful number seven machine. And he sends it to the inside. A little paint traded there as they go through the corner. No harm, no foul. And Grant going to have to fall back in line. Two car breakaway at the front by a straightaway. One and two are out ahead of TJ Cruz, the early race leader in car number 14. This race, unlike the Crown Vicks, now 12 laps clean and green. Oh, as they say that, Bubba Healy going to go through the dirt. Yellow is out. No, just kidding. So we're still green. I saw the yellow flag for a moment there, but we're still green. Cole Gunter back to the seventh position. Got the Cole Trickles colors on that. And he's under fire again from that seven car as the signal for halfway. I think the flagman reaching for the yellow to go halfway is what threw me off there. Clean and green for the first 13 laps of this thing. William Kearns the leader, Mike Engel in second. They catch the Bobby Rowland machine again. A little flame underneath the 69 as he lets off in the corners. He's got Mike Engel, your points that are right on his, closing up on him in those neons. Baba Healy still working over the TJ Cruz number 14 car. Toby Ganey in the 42 making it a three car jam session for third off turn four. TJ Cruz and that Chevy Cavalier got a mirror full of Bubba Healy in the Dodge Neon and the Saturn Station wagon. That's Toby Ganey. The leaders way out by themselves, but it's a good race at the front. Engel sizing up William Kearns as they lap around the 14K of Colton Graham. Battles on for the final spot on the podium. TJ Cruz, 14, has it. Bubba Healy wants it. He's been trying and trying and trying to no avail to get that final spot up in the top three. The leader still on an island of their own, nearly half a track. Look at Bubba Healy just go through the dirt and take over the spot as they make contact off two. Coming up on lap 18 now, with seven laps to go. Mike Ingles trying to figure out how he's going to make his make the move around William Kearns, playing a peekaboo in his mirror a little bit. Oh, more contact with Healy and Cruz in the back half of the field. He's turn number two, that's the hot spot right now. Ray Ganey has caught his brother, Toby Ganey. William Kearns brings us to five to go, 20 laps complete. Bobby Rowland way out of the way of the leaders. Okay. Pretty high up there. I think he may be shutting down here. Oh, Mike Engel starting to take his shot. Driving way down to the bottom. Oh, yellow is out. Now the yellow is out for sure. And I think it's for Bobby Rowland slowly limping number 18. He's a rolling. Toby on the inside, Branley outside. Bray used to drive that 42, but he's moved up to the A-Mods on a regular basis now. Yeah, his, his bigger, younger brother is in the number 42 now. Here we go. Four lap shootout to settle it. That's one mile of racing. And we'll see what's going to happen. William Kearns has been up front for much of the second half of the race. He's got to deal with the point leader, Mike Engel, as we go back to green. Well, the leaders side by side, still pulling away from the rest of the field. Kearns inside angle trying to roll the top side. Are we under and caution, I believe? We are under caution. Okay. The lights are on, but I didn't see a flight. They didn't take the restart. Okay. All right. We'll try this again. 69 jumped the restart. I didn't see the lights come back on. So they're, they're throwing me a curveball with these yellows or not yellows, Steve. All right. So the field of eight racked up. And it'll be Kearns on the inside once again. No rechews. They stay right there. Kearns inside, angle outside. Green flag in the air once again. Engel with a good start that time on the outside. See if he can roll the top. Get the momentum on the outside as they go side by side. Drag race on the back stretch. Still side by side. Kearns down on the bottom of the racetrack. Engel not able to make the outside work. Not even the momentum off of turn number four. He's able to get him there to the door on the 69. He falls back in line. Crossover move perhaps. No. Nothing doing on the back straightaway. 
right there on the back bumper of Kern's kick. Bubba Healy and TJ Cruz get together. Oh, Healy gets drop kicked to the outside. He's going to go from about fourth to sixth here. Now make that fifth as he's able to power back up around the outside of the 42. Kearns and Engel still going at it. 23 laps complete. They're nope. going to see the white flag this time by. Oh, Engel's looking to the bottom. Kearns going to shut the door on him in turn one. Final trip down the back straightaway. Kearns running a defensive line. Engel's not able to get there. The drivers making their way out of turn four. Going to see the checker flag. William Kearns, Mike Engel. TJ Cruz, Bray Ganey, and Bubba Healy round out the top five. <laughs> Young 16-year-old Toby Ganey letting Bubba Healy know how he felt about that. Already out of his car, let's hear it for your SRQ Texas Mini Stock winner, William Kearns in the number 69. William, come on over here and have a word with me. You asked him, were you going to get your picture tonight? That was up to you. And it looks like you made your way up here. Who do you want to thank? I want to thank my wife and the 17 and 14, all driving us clean. And, it's, and my stepson, Matt Miller, which is, he got injured with back energy. He can't race no more, so we're doing all this for him. All right, congratulations. We'll see you back next Saturday night. A little sportsmanship down here between first and second. Mike Engel, second place here tonight. And, uh, man, you gave him everything you, you could. You raced him hard and clean. They made you start so far back in the heat race today, you just didn't have the track position you needed. Yeah, if I would have started a little better, I kind of probably did better. But uh, he earned everything. The only thing I could have done was move him out of the way. But I want to go ahead and thank Tubes and Hoses. They uh, helped me out with all the parts on the car and... You know, uh, my father-in-law, my wife, and everybody, thank you all. Well, it's been a good year for you, and this will be a good point tonight. Congratulations on second. Thank you. Thank you. Mike Engel brings it home second, and Steve got up with our third-place finisher. I got third-place finisher right here, TJ Cruz, on a hard-fought third-place run. Looks like we stay green for the first 21 laps, so there's a lot of beating and banging out there, but you're able to still come home with a podium finish. Yeah. Hard-fought race, but my one car just kept beating on me, but he couldn't get around the fair. Uh, who do you want to thank always helps you get up here? Just my wife and Arbindale for letting us be able to do this. All right, we'll see you out again next Saturday night. Next up are your street stocks going for 25 laps of racing. Go to patreon.com slash speedway video now. Champion from 417 Southern Speedway for the street stocks. So a couple of champions on the front row. It looks like Rob Coon 78 and Cleve Lewis 4 making it back out. So 8 of the 10 that signed in today going to make the call. So I wasn't expecting that many. So we'll take it. And uh, we're getting ready for green, it appears. That beautiful long 19, Cody Struble, set to lead us to the green flag. Run away with the street stocks. Let's see if they behave themselves. A lot of sparks out of rushing number 91 as he's sideways off the corner. Field scrambles. Top two break away. Struble on the bottom, but he left one barely. Side by side down the front stretch. Kayla outside, Struble inside. Gerard off the base on the back stretch. Looks like he stops the middle of the race once again. Boy, he got sideways and he was pointing right in the direction of your team car there, Steve. But luckily, everybody able to get by. Great battle for the lead and powering up on the outside. Danny Kayla in the sevens got the lead on the back stretch. Kayla to the front. Struble second. And Tony Russian now in the third spot. Kuhn having a good run from the back of the field after not surviving the heat race. And that, I, I swear, it looks like a mod mini every time I see it in car number 78. Out front, all Danny Kaler, Struble right behind him. In the third position, Tony Russian. Watching the action towards the back of the field. Gerard going to get around Jason Bartram. A lot of damage done to both of those cars in the heat races earlier today, and they're trying to work their way back up from the back of the field, but it's been slow going so far. Top two cars, the only two that really escaped the heats unscathed, have run away from the rest of the field. Battle shaping up for third right now. Coon has his sight set on Tiny Russian, putting a nose me inside. Yeah, it looked like it was overheating issues perhaps on the 78 in the heat, so 
They seem to have that rectified in the 78 car. Up to third is rushing it sideways big time off two. Rushing to close back up on the back bumper of Kuhn for the fourth position now. Right behind them, Lauren Lanier in a borrowed car. She blew up in practice, or yeah, practice in her main car. So she's second in the points. She's trying to pick up some points tonight as well. Well, all things considered, a fifth place run tonight as she runs right now isn't too bad with all we've seen. These guys, guys and gals definitely behaving themselves a little bit better so far in the feature. Eight laps complete. We couldn't and even get Lewis. this far. Oh. Lewis with a little up from the 51. Can I see what the official call is here? Well, they disappeared behind the door there into turn number one and around is Cleve Lewis with Gerard in the 51. It's been an eventful day for Gerard in car number 51. So if he wins this thing, man, we're going to we have to wait on him to get in the other car. And he's about the only driver with a clean day thus far. Let's see what happens with eight complete. 25 laps of the scheduled distance. Field slowly making their way through turn number three. They'll come off turn number four and look for Speedy Green. They have it. We're backing away. Green flag is in the air. Keller with a good start out front. Struble second. Kuhn side by side with Russian fourth. The fourth position. Kuhn right up underneath the back bumper of Struble. Struble's able to gather back up and keep it going. Russian tucks in behind Kuhn. Kuhn rushing low, loose. Whoa. Around goes the 91 of Russian. Oh, and he oh, caught Lauren Lanier. Himself. Lanier went up in the air with the front end of that race car, and there's the yellow. Tough break for Lauren. Second place in points. Around went Russian, and looked like Lauren might have hopped the wheel. Now, Steve, you know he's hungry after what happened to him on the front straightaway in that heat race. He's trying to take a car with no front bumper, no hood, and put it up there in victory lane. He's got to beat. Danny Kaler in the seven, Cody Struble 19, and good recovery for Rob Kuhn in car number 78. Top four are bunched up, double file, and everybody else single file behind them as the green flag comes back up. Kaler with another good start out front. Struble's going to try to tuck. No, Struble's, Struble's going to try to fight back on the outside. Kuhn going to shove the nose down on the inside of Struble. That's the battle for second behind race leader Danny Kaley as they come off the corner. And Kaler. Still with that top spot. Kuhn puts the bumper up there. That big wedge front bumper could really get up underneath the back of the seven car if he's able to get there. Top four, five, and everybody's single file in turn three. 10 laps in, 15, 11, check that, 11, 14 to go. Side by side for the fifth position right now. Gerard makes his way around Lanier. Lanier Whoa. makes a little contact there. Gerard has to get off the gas and Opens the door for Russian. Russian just rushes down into turn number three and going to take over that spot. Like old Joe Girard, he's been a pinball in a lot of the action today. Girard slipping backwards. And up front, it's still car number seven for Danny Kaler as we're halfway home. Kaler out front, couple of car lengths on Kuhn. Kuhn closes up the back bumper, but Kaler is able to just throttle down the front stretch. Three car breakaway at the front of the field. Jason Bartram trying to make up, well, a little bit of sparks out of the 68 now, but he's trying to make something out of what could have been a nothing day for him. Looks like the 68 is getting a little bit better as we go. Still the lead for Danny Kaler. Rob Kuhn in second. Cody Struble still in third. Battles on for second as Kaler begins to pull away. Coming around to nine laps to go now. Shrubel trying to peek his nose to the inside of Coon, but Coon's just able to, to keep the throttle down in the front on the back stretch. Shrubel going to look down on the inside. Coon opens the door. Coon, though, powers down the straightaway, hangs on to the spot. As they continue to dice it up for second, Danny Kaler in the seven, still pulling away. Battle shaping up for the fifth position as Gerard has caught the 91 of Russian. Russian gives a little, little bit of loose there on the exit door. Oh, Opens the door for Gerard. Russian looked in the mirror and saw he had company and really got sideways off turn number four. Battle Here's for second, shaping up. Shrubel inside. And Shrubel. the door. Got to the inside, couldn't put the power down. Now going to try to do the little crossover move as he goes into the infield for a moment. 
Jason Bartram right there in the fourth position, trying to wait to see what happens for this second place battle. See if they can get up to the podium. Five laps to go now, and Cleve Lewis off the track. Lewis is going to pull the number four to come out to the infield. Out front is all Kaler with almost a two-second lead. Going to be tough to catch him and even tougher to pass him here inside of five laps to go. Danny Kaler having a great night. Didn't really get to see what he had in the heat race. Battle for second. Coon slams the door on Struble going into three. Struble's got a nose in there. Oh, Struble again with a run off the corner. They make some contact, and Struble Coon hangs on the spot. It lets Coon gather back up. The 91 of Russian pulls into the infield with two laps to go to settle this street stock feature. Unless we have a caution, the battle is going to be for second. Struble all over the back of Rob Coons, number 78 now. White flag set to fly, and a little bump and run here. Cody Struble looking to the inside. White flag in the air. Oh, Danny Keller, the battle right now is for second. Coon has it, able to throttle down the backstretch. Checker flag is flying for Danny Keeler. The race for second comes down to Robert Kuhn, Jason. Robert Kuhn, Cody Struble is third, Jason Bartram fourth, and Joe Girard is able to rebound with a fifth place finish for the number 51. Climbing out of this car, your feature winner, Danny Keeler, in the number seven, Street Stock. Danny had a little problem with the car in practice earlier. Little hole in the radiator, able to borrow one and put this thing out front tonight. Been out of the car for a little while, kind of like riding a bicycle. Yeah, it's, this place has been a thorn in my side a couple times I've been here, but uh, it feels good to finally win here, and I really appreciate what y'all have done, giving us something to race. Without y'all, we wouldn't be racing anywhere. Well, we appreciate you coming out. Have anybody want to thank on the car here? I got to thank LeBeau well uh Jarrett, Garrett, Blaine, Kenny, Homie, everybody that helps me make, make it possible. All right, congratulations, Danny Kaler. They're, they're going last couple laps. Rob's got a smile on Rob, come on over here. Rob Kuhn, car number 78. You and Cody kind of discussing what, what went down. Really a fun battle there for second. And uh, second place, not too bad for you tonight. Nope, nope. It's been a couple years since I've been back here, and then I just thought I'd give it a try. You guys invited the street stocks, and I was just thanking him for being a clean race and how fun this place was, you know. Well, it's good to see you back out here after the heat race. Was overheating issues? No, the radiator kept. We had checked water, and I guess the radiator kept them locked completely. I knew exactly when I seen it come up. I, ah, that's why I quickly got off. So it was our fault. Well, with all the action that happened out there, it might have been the best thing for you. I didn't know at that time, and I seen all these records. Did, did I do that? I'm telling my dad, and then I'm like, what did I do? <laughs> so they said no. It was just an incident in the front. Well, it's good to see you back out here in a good battle with, with Cody. Congratulations on second place. Who would you like to thank tonight? I'd like to thank my dad, my wife, my son helping me today, my other son right there helping me, this family, basically. Well, Rob, congratulations. Second place for Rob Kuhn in car number 78, and Steve's going to catch up with our third place finisher. Going to add a quick word here with Cody Struble before he jumps into pure stock. Good run coming home in a podium finish. A little beating and banging, a little slippery out there on the track, but you're able to come home with a podium finish. I think we had... Same fast car. Uh, we had the, we had a pretty fast car. Probably could have had a chance of getting second, maybe not first, but it was definitely a big fight to even come home in third, so it was pretty fun. Well, congratulations. Who do you want to thank? Uh, my whole family, my dad, everybody who comes here, every race for us, uh, all my sponsors, Roll Pavers, Worthington AC, Cross Electric, Wild West Charters, Henley's, Henley's Grading, and Rod's Relics. Congratulations. See if we can see you again later on tonight. Cody Struble pulling double duty, folks. Graduated high school yesterday. Podium finished tonight. Going to try to do it again in the number 19 pure stock. Go to patreon.com slash speedway video now. Cody Struble on the outside. He's got the lead. Good run down the back straightaway. How about Cody Struble from the street stock to the pier stock into the lead? 
side the battle is for second one back to fifth. Big gaggle of cars going down into turn number one. Oh, a big issue there. Coming off turn number two, Roop stacking up the field. And here comes James Wright in that beautiful blue Camaro. Trying to close in on Cody Struble's number 19. Cody's got a big lead, and he better run away with it. Only two laps to complete, and Wright is already there. And here comes Bones. Brandon Duchero body slams Ronnie Roop up the racetrack in turn three. Brandon Duchero in that big body Monte Carlo putting it to use as he jumps into the top three. Tim Alexander trying to make a move around LeMaster for Finn. All right, and they, they make contact, trading paint, bouncing off each other. Four laps complete, a lot of contact, but now we get down single file, trying to get into a rhythm here and click off some laps. Cody Struber, the leader. James Wright into second. Brandon Duchere in third. So just like that, the cream rises to the top here at Auburndale Speedway. Five laps complete. Struble's lead is slowly starting to shrink as he continues to show the way. But here comes James Wright, the point leader, closing in on him. A lot of separation throughout the field right now. Ronnie Roop under attack now from Alexander's number 63. Tim Alexander in that Camaro going after Ronnie Roop's number 80. Alexander dips a wheel into the grass and turns one and two, keeps it going. Leaders closing in on the 410 of Dale Tillery. The lap car stays to the outside. The leader's gonna get by. Cody Struble leads it. James Wright trying to close in in car number 56. Eight laps complete. Oh, Ronnie Roop out of shape again off four. Alexander got into the back of him just a tad as they came off the corner. Roop was pointed down towards the infield, gathers it back up, but he slips back to the fifth position. Struble leads, and here comes James Wright, starting to put the pressure on the youngster up front. Ten laps in the books here for the Pure Stocks. And Cody Struble. Better not look in the mirror, because here comes old blue, James Wright. James Wright, the third in the second position. A few car lengths separate them. But about a half a straightaway back to Bones in the third position. Spread out to Tim Alexander in fourth. And all the way back to Ronnie Roop. Look this, between the top five. Closing in on halfway already for the treasure marks of Barstow Pure Stocks. This time, I will see the crossed flags for Cody Struble. Struble's led all the way from the outside of the front row. James Wright is within about four car lengths. But again, catching them is one thing, passing them is another. Sean Master and Brandon Love battling for position ahead of Dakota Weiss. Cars spread out all over the speedway here at the halfway point. Top two off in their own zip code, a distant third right now for Brandon Duchere in the 23. Duchere did not start the heat race. But making the most out of the feature tonight, that's what matters. Ten laps to go to settle this one. Cody Struble, but don't look now. Got that fast Camaro right behind him. That's the guy they know they have to beat every time James Wright is here at Auburndale. He is the Pied Piper of this division, and he's there. One car length behind Struble. The laps can't go quick enough for young Cody Struble at the front. Seventeen laps complete for car number 19, and he's got a mirror full of James Wright's number 56. Wright is right there on the back bumper. Struble parks it in the corner, not letting James get to the inside. Oh, look, now they're coming up on some lap traffic side by side. Tim, Timmy Walters in the six, Colt Cecil 92. Colt had a great run in the heat. It is not translated to the feature. Right to the inside. Battles on for the lead and turns three and four. James Wright puts it to the inside. Struble trying to fight back and hold down the outside as they're coming up on the lap cars. Cecil slows down the back stretch. Well, a little puff of smoke perhaps out of the 92. A lot of smoke, a little fluid down on the back straightaway. Yellow is out. There are 
Sharp putting that lap on the board is lap 20 with Wright as the leader. James Wright had just made the pass, but see, I think we were both watching the same thing. As soon as the 92 made the turn, we could see the fluid reflecting in the light. It doesn't look like a whole, hopefully just water, and it'll evaporate quite quickly. It doesn't have the sheen to it that oil does, but again, we're up here, so we'll let the officials come take a look. The break for Colt Cecil. I guess that would explain why that car was off the pace a bit compared to the speed it had in the heat. We're getting word from track crews that it is water, so that will dissipate pretty fast and hopefully be evaporated by the time it's time for the late models to come back out here on their slick tires. So we, we are going back to the last completed lap now. We are now on lap 19, so that makes lap or car number 19 the leader. And Timmy Walters decides to pull back out on the racetrack. He might... Uh, be thinking it might get a little rowdy on this restart. Could pick up a few spots. That number six car, it's got quite the history. Has won a lot of races over at the New Smyrna Speedway with Mike Trockey behind the wheel back in the day when it was car number 43. What do you think is going to happen now with the 19 of Struble now that he knows he definitely cannot leave that inside open for the 56? Well, he's very lucky that, again, the caution is saving the driver who just got passed for the lead. So he'll have the lane choice. I, I, I think you're right, Steve. He's gonna, he knows he needs to protect the bottom. If they get to the inside of you, especially if it's James Wright, it's going to be tough to hold them off. Uh, lane selection going to be important. If James Wright stays down on the inside, I think he's got a good shot at it. If, if James goes to the outside, I, I think advantage Cody Struble. But we'll wait and see what's going to happen. They are set and ready on the back straightaway. Cody Struble, the leader on the inside. James Wright, second place up on the outside. Brandon Duchere sitting in the catbird seat, perhaps in third as the field fires. Green flag is out. Great restart for James Wright on the outside. Struble with the quickest way around, though the shortest way around inside. Wright's able to throttle down the back stretch, though. Get that Camaro out front and close the door. Oh. Possibly door still open. Struble sends it, but he gets sent by Duchere. Battle's going to be for second. James Wright hits the afterburners. Boy, James Wright making it work on the outside, and here comes Bones. Brandon Duchere. Duchere putting his nose in there. Struble hung out on the outside, side by side behind him for the fourth position. Alexander inside, roof outside. Boy, James Wright, an impressive restart. You know, he was able to keep the 19 Cody Struble pinched down on the inside of the racetrack. Momentum in the favor of the faster car. James Wright made it work the hard way here at Auburndale. And he sets sail now. Coming to three, inside of three laps to go. Coming on here to two laps to go. All oh, James Wright, Dushire second, Struble third, Alexander Roof, the master. This time by, we'll look for the white flag. One to go for James Wright. It's going to be tough to catch him. The point leader looking for a great night. If he can hang on for one more lap. Struble trying to fight back for the second position. Down the back stretch. And it will be James Wright in the 56 drag race for second at the line. I think Cody Struble got it. We'll wait on second. scoring. Dushire third. Alexander fourth. And Ronnie Roop with a good round at the top five. We have $240 for the 50-50. We'll give that away, but make some noise for James Wright, your winner in our Pure Stock division here tonight. The points hitter gets it done. Hard front battle there. So we'll get James over to the front of the car and grab a quick word with him, and we'll have him draw the 50-50. Well, James, you took the lead. Caution came out, put you back in second, but that was a masterful job on the restart, making it work on the outside. How were you able to pull that off? Um, mainly, I, I want to thank the, the uh, guy in the 19. I don't know his name, never raced with him before, but got under him, gave me plenty of room down there. Restart, I mean, he, he you know, he, he gave me all the room you can ask for down there, didn't drive my door. Um, the car was really, really good tonight. I want to thank my dad for working on this thing and uh, thank my girls and all my buddies for being out here helping me. Well, you're the man to beat out here, it seems. Every time I see the results from here, you're up, you're up near the front and you held off Cody and, and Brandon today. Got another win. If you can do over. Reach up in here and grab our winning 50-50 ticket. 
And we'll let you know what the ticket is here in a second. Is there anybody else you need to thank tonight for all the effort? Uh, thank my thank my buddy Danny, uh, Ron, Nick, my girls coming out, Chris Nairmore, Nairmore Machine Shop, Charlie Brown, those guys. Uh, thank my buddy uh, uh, Richard Elkins, Wayne Morris, and everybody that helps us out. Ladies and gentlemen, it's here for your winner, James Wright, in car number 56. And now we'll give away a little bit of money here. Going to have a word back here with Cody Struble coming home with a second place run. Good finish. Uh, Coming off the three stock third place run, led the first 19 laps. But I don't know if you know, but the 56 Camaro is the car to beat here. So if that's any, you know, consolation here. It's it sucks to finish second. I think I have uh, eight second place finishes on the year now. So it really sucks to finish second. But I'm glad I was able to race with all the fast guys here. Well, congratulations. Who do you want to thank on this car? Uh, everybody else. Everybody, my dad, my mom, my whole family, everybody that shows up once again. Uh, all the same sponsors, Royal Pavers, Worthington AC, Auto Tech, Wild West Charters, Cross Electric, Rod's Relics, and Henley's Graden. They all help us a lot. Congratulations. 2.5 average finish tonight for Cody Struble. It looked like you had second until you came off turn number four on the last lap. Third place for you tonight after not starting the heat, so not a bad result. Yeah, it's not horrible. Uh, the car definitely isn't driving like it has been the last six or seven times, but we'll figure it out what's going on with it, get it back going. Uh, that, that's the fun of racing, always keeps you working, right? Hey, yeah, we was behind the, anyways. My kid had a barrel race, and I got here like three minutes before the heat race, and the distributor took a crap, had to change that. So anyway, we're lucky to race this race. Anybody else to thank tonight? Yeah, all these people for showing up. Appreciate all you guys. Broken Poor, uh, Harrison Wastewater, they uh, helped me out quite a bit. So. Need building materials, go see that guy right there. There you go, Brandon Desher brings it home with a third place run tonight. Last week you won the EMOD race, tonight you win the 50-50. Uh, Here's 240 bucks. On a roll, I guess. I guess so, no more second place for you. Jared Corpy, our 50-50 winner, one of my racers over at New Smyrna. Pretty cool stuff right there. Ryan, you think anybody came for a super late model racing? I don't know, let's ask him. Who wants super late models? 16 people. Who wants super late models? All right, we'll bring them out. That ain't good enough. Church is tomorrow morning. Super late model. Let's make some noise. Go to patreon.com slash speedway video now. Thank you. And I'm even faster when I watch it on speedway videos. Yeah. You think that'll be in the video? Uh, do you think it will? Mm-hmm. I don't know if it will or not. I can't ever find my mouth with this straw. Pretty much every week out here when the supers are here, you know, those guys do their work and two good hot shoes behind the wheel. So we'll watch. Should be fun. Hunter Love Lady. Check that Chase Love Lady firing off from the 10th position. Always a fast car here tonight. Trying to get the bugs worked out of that car. We're going to come down to green flag right now. Green flag is in the air. Brown with a good start. Anderson outside. We're going side by side as we come in out of turn two. The whole field side by side down the back stretch. Good clean start, dead even at the front. Brown on the inside, Anderson on the outside. Who will lead lap one as they squeeze together? Oh! Brown and Anderson tangle into turn number one. Yellow flag is out, and oh, Weaver just pounds into Bray Holmes. Oh, I didn't even see that part down there, Ryan. I'm still looking up on top of the wall here. Yeah, we had Red flag on. is on the track. Red flag is on the track. Anderson on the outside. Who will lead lap one as they squeeze together? Hop out of his car. He checks on Bray Holmes. He took a big shot, and here he comes. Give these drivers a round of applause, folks. Anderson rolling away. Roggins out of his car. Everybody's working with safety officials. Going to check on Carter Brown over there. Right, usually we have the crazy race, race one, and then everybody calms down in race two here. But we'll, we'll have to watch that back on Speedway Video tomorrow because Kendall Anderson really had, she couldn't go any higher. No, Anderson had nowhere else to go, pinned up against the wall that they just came together. And then the aftermath behind them, Bray Holmes took a big shot. Weaver was in there towards the back of the field. And I didn't, 
I, I'm with you, Steve. I didn't see what happened to Keith as he got kind of lost in the fray as they disappeared behind the door here. Getting the word coming across the radio, all drivers involved in the incident are okay, so that's the good news. That's definitely important tonight. Track safety or driver safety is always important here at Auburn LCA. These, these cars can be rebuilt, but bodies can't necessarily, necessarily all the time. That's exactly it. And that'll know, be I one. Had a, I had a hard hit earlier tonight there in turn four, but it, it, it wasn't as hard as it looked. I had it rolled up before I got the wall. You know all too well how hard you can hit the walls around here, even on a bull ring like this. But that this will be one we'll want to go back and see on Speedway video. Because that was a squeeze play and then more happening. It's almost two wrecks in one as the field tried to avoid the leaders getting together. So under red flag here in race number two, scheduled for 50 laps. So tough way to start. But under red flag here at the Auburn Hill Speedway, lap one of race number two of the super late model 50s. And there goes the beautiful number 94 throwback scheme for Keith Rogan to his old, I believe, uh, Hooters days, or Goodies Dash Series days, I believe. Sharp looking car. Keith always has good looking race cars. And unfortunately, that one is up on the hook. He was fastest in practice. Scuffed the outside wall twice during qualifying. And unfortunately, heavy, heavy damage on car number 94 as it gets towed back to the pit area. Some unhappy racers walking their way back to the pit area too. So our restart order is set. One lap complete, 49 to go. It's almost a, a full reset here with the carnage that took place. But one lap is officially in the books. So we look for the green flag this time by off turn number four. Green flag is up. And they thunder away into turn number one. Bigly down on the bottom. Neary on the outside, TJ to Carroll, a runoff too, but he had to pedal it to knock it in the back of Dylan Bigley. Patience is key here, we're still early. Lap number two in the books. Bigley down on the bottom, trying to hold off Nick Neary in the 17. Here comes the white 88 for TJ to carry. He sticks his nose in there. And TJ to has got room on the bottom. Bigley clear to the lead side by side battle from second on back. Neary, a little twitch off turn number two. DeCare is there on the bottom. Neary trying to hold it on the high side. It'll work for a few laps, but once those tires get kind of hot, the outside lane will fade. The team cars, 42 to 142, side by side for fourth and fifth. Chase Love, Lady sixth. Colin Allman up to seventh. A little bit of separation from seventh on back. Five laps up on the scoreboard. Still deadlocked side by side for second. TJ to care down the bottom. Nick Neary on the outside. A little bit of cosmetic damage on the back of Love Lady's number eight car. Somebody's gotten to the side of the left rear quarter. Still dead even for second. Great racing behind the Dylan Bigley car. Yellow flag is out around as Hunter Lovelady off turn four. Thought I saw Donnelly kind of out of shape, and behind him, out of my view, is the 68 car of Lovelady going around. So the yellow flag is out for the second time in just seven laps. So caution free in race one, already two cautions early. This one, this little single car spin, we'll see if there's any call. I did not see the start of it, so we'll wait for the official call here and see what's going to happen. The love lady keeps his spot. Bigley down on the inside. Neary back to the outside. to care down on the inside of row number two. As we're getting set to go back, green flag racing. Green flag back in the air. Side by side. Up front, Bigley, Neary outside. Right behind him, side by side, all the way back to the seventh position. Oh, Nick Neary going to lead that lap by just a bumper cover there, Steve. Neary fighting hard on the outside. Oh, trouble. John Nutley gets up on the back end of the Jonas machine. We sort it out. Stay green. Still out front. Oh, a little bit of contact. Neary coming almost across the front bumper of Bigley, but they're able to keep it going. And Bigley now tucked back into the second position. The battle right now is for third, right behind them. Side by side, you've got 
John Guy in the green and black, number 42, trying to make his way around. DJ DeCare for the third position. DeCare does fall back to fourth. DeCare's got the nose back in there. John Guy looking to sweep the night around his teammate, now around DeCare. DeCare trying to fight back, but boy, that 42 car is strong here tonight. John Guy. Yeah, well, still not able to clear TJ DeCare. Shoves the white nose that 88 car back to the inside. And now he gets single file. No, DeCare back down on the inside. Makes a hole where there wasn't one. Contact. They sort it out now. John Guy is through. DeCare is not afraid to put the pressure on no matter who it is. He does not back down. No, the youngster not afraid to mix it up with the veterans out here. But how about Nick Neary from the outside on the restart wrestling the lead away from Dylan Bigley? So very early in the race, so a long way to go. Speaking of veterans, B5, Stickler. Stickler been hanging around. He hasn't been able to make much ground. He got kind of stacked up on that restart. Trying to make something happen, though, as he puts the nose on the back bumper of the 88. John not only having a handful of the night, caught him a 97. Right front all torn up on it after the contact with Jonas. Much of the field now gets single file with 16 laps complete. Kendall Anderson trying to make her way around Chase Love Lady. Neary going to lead us to the lap number 17. The 17 car out in front. By about three or four car lengths on Bigley. John Guy, though, if he can work his way around Dylan Bigley, Probably going to be able to close the gap, but how hard will he charge? How much of the tires will he use to get by him? Not quite halfway through. And Nick Neary is showing the way. Bigley's got company from John Guy. He's going to back and forth, has company from Stickler. And here comes Charlie Brown in the 11, working over Colin Allman. Allman's been stuck around that sixth or seventh position much of the race, and here's Brown. The other number 11, starting to make some head. On the board. 30 still on the board. 20 on the board, but 75 laps on these tires. It's a long way, but we still have 30 laps to go on this one. Nick Mary with a comfortable lead, kind of riding right now, trying to save his stuff. Things calming down, but again, a restart, another cycle on these tires could change the game. DJ DeCare to the bumper full of that 142 Cody Stickler. Over 200 people listening to us on track two. We appreciate you tuning in. Stickler trying to put, put the pressure on DeCare once again for that fifth position as we're just about one lap shy of halfway. Best battle on the racetrack is for the fourth position. TJ to care that 188. Oh, oh, Hunter or Chase Lovelady in the eight. He just pulled off to number four. Tough day for Lovelady as we come to halfway. That eight car last year was one of the contenders on a weekly basis out here, and it just has not been the greatest of years for Chase Lovelady and Connor number eight. So up front, Nick Neary in the 17 as he leads us to lap 26. 28 car, Dylan Bigley has settled into that second position. John Guy has not been able to make much progress. TJ DeCare, Cody Stickler, and Charlie Brown making his presence felt. Mario Gosling racing on the hood of that 11, so got a good build underneath him. Coming around here to lap 28. Mary, Bigley, Guy, DeCare, Stickler. Solid top five. And I'm liking the way that 11 car looks. He might have saved some stuff there in race number one, and he's getting all the good out of it now in race number two. Right now, not a whole lot of pressure. Everybody kind of riding sparks out of the Bigley machine as he bottoms out a little bit through the corner, but no harm, no foul. Bigley hanging tough there in the second position, though. Chuckled the last few times out in that machine here, so. If he can hold off the second position, I'm sure it's one spot shorter than where he'd like to be, but we won't be completely disappointed. Yeah, good recovery here in race number two. The, the Bigleys have kind of struggled getting a handle on this little boring. They were 
Regulars at the 417 Southern Speedway. They kind of made that their playground over the last handful of years. Won't be long before the number 17 in here catches Nutley and Love Lady. Last cars making their way down the back stretch. That uh, could mix things up. Nutley's been a little bit out of shape throughout much of the afternoon. Right now things calming down. 33 laps in the books. Nick Neary starting to stretch out the lead on Bigley. He's done a great job to fend off the challenge of race one winner, John Guy. TJ to care, pulling away from Cody Stickler. Stickler's car doesn't seem to have the muscle that it normally does. That number 11, Ryan, you called it. That number 11 in the sixth position, that's, that car's really coming to life. I think he's going to fall short of the, the win, but maybe he can crack the top five here if he can yeah. get away or get around with Stickler. One of the fastest cars on the racetrack as he's really putting the Stickler starting to fall off, man. The 11th foot shape up for third, Ryan, as John Guy used up all those American racers. That's definitely a possibility because he's falling back into the clutches now of TJ to care. And there goes Stickler up the track. Stickler's got a problem. The 142 shuts down in two. He's Yellow there. flag is out. That'll change the game. Tire going down, yeah, perhaps. Looks like looks. It's looks a little low there on the left you know, front. Left front looks down from my vantage point. Let me try to take a peek out here. My my contacts start to get tired later in the night. We get a. Now that car, Steve, was starting to fall backwards. We, we were noticing the gap started to open up. Peering through the Speedway video, left front looks a little low. Collins going to end up with a good finish out of this thing. And they haven't, they admittedly haven't had the best of, of cars. They unloaded here for the first time in a while. They've been chasing it much of the day. But sometimes you just got to be in it and take what comes to you. Collins had a great run going over at New Smyrna a couple of weeks ago and found the wall late in that one. Hoping not to repeat that fate here tonight. Yep, spoke to him earlier. I had to put a new clip on that thing, and but got it back out here. And sometimes the new clips, the geometries, and everything take a little while to get used to. Yeah, when they're fast and you have to repair them, they're never quite the same. You kind of got to massage them back into place, if you will. And man, they've had to push Cody Stickler right off the racetrack. Definitely um, one of my top drivers in the state. With a lot of help there from. Kevin Macy earlier. They always help each other, whether it's on Macy Sportsman and Charlie Brown late model, Carter Brown late model. Okay, 14 laps to go here, ladies and gentlemen. Race number two for the super late models tonight. Been a bit more action packed maybe than the first one, depending on how you like things. But maybe we haven't seen anything yet, Steve. Nick Neary, Dylan Bigley, a couple of Surprise drivers up at the front of the field. Great drivers in their own right, but Nick you know. Neary, Palmetto, Florida, Dylan Bigley, Naples, Florida. Set for the restart. Speedy looks him over. Green flag back in the air. Bigley with a launch. Bigley really got it to fire off on the outside. They're going to see if this is going to go. Oh, Nick Neary under attack now from John Guy. He gets the bumper. He gets set up the racetrack. Here comes Guy in the 42. Oh, and Brown. Holly Brown almost got the wall pretty good there. Side by side for a second. Guy inside. Neary outside. Neary, I think, is still a little bit better because I think Guy's tires are getting away. Oh. They got to go on the front stretch. Now the big Neary's going to possibly return the favor here. Or that's going to open the door for DeCare. Well, oh, Neary couldn't get to him. John Guy now up into the second position. Dylan Bigley's got a big lead. Is it big enough with 11 laps to go? TJ DeCare in the back of Nick Neary in turn number one. Neary's drifting through one and two, but hangs onto it. Bigley out front with 10 laps to go. Oh, Dylan Bigley. Two and a half miles left for these Warriors here tonight. Battle for third, shaping up. DeCare's got the nose in there. Oh, DeCare shoves Nick Neary up the track on the apex of the corner. DeCare wants back up on the podium, and here comes that 42. John Guy starting to eat into that lead. This one's not over yet. Neary's really got the throttle on the outside, got the back stretch. Right back up here on the front stretch, going into turn as well. Still side by side for third as they battle. They lose touch with the top two. Bigley's lead now has evaporated down to about three car lengths. John Guy likely going to get there. We'll see if he can get past. Nick Neary starting to fade here in the late stages of this one. 
Brown fifth, Allman sixth, Anderson back up to seventh, and it's Jonas Lovelady and Nutley, the top ten. Big Lee needs to get his eyes out of the mirror because that 42 is coming. He's got to focus on what's out front. Six to go. Coming around to five right now. Skinny's going to show up the field. High five. Dylan Bigley has about two and a half car lengths on John Guy inside of five to go. Guy closes in the corners. Bigley, a little bit of motor power off the corner. Stretches it back out, but John Guy so smooth tonight. Have a good run. Four, six, four more left. Got the 29 of Anderson getting a little loose on that. So Three to go, time running out for John Guy. He was able to close to it with about three car lengths, but not much closer, and time is running out. The laps go by in a hurry here at Auburndale. 13 second laps around here. Two to go for the 28. Double sticks, 48 down, two to go. Fields making their way into turn three and four. White, White flag. flag in the air. Final lap for Dylan Bigley. And if he's going to hang on, what a restart he got there on lap number 36. Final time into turn number three. Dylan Bigley going to return to victory lane here at the Auburndale Speedway ahead of John Guy and TJ to care. Right, right. coming home fourth. Charlie Brown rounds out the top five. Get ready to climb out of this car. Let's make some noise. For Dylan Bigley, your Sanuco Southern Race Fuel feature winner of race number two. D Dylan, we all want to hear about that last restart there. Made this thing fire off right on the outside, able to keep it out front. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, the restart around here, the outside always gets a good jump. Um, I just knew I just didn't have to spin the tires. Uh, I knew if I got a good restart, I definitely was able to hold him down like he was able to hold me down the the restart before that. Um, and it's been a long time coming. We've been battling brake issues with this thing for four to five months now. Um, still have brake issues, kind of pumping it up every straightaway corner. So biggest thing I got to thank Rex and uh, Coletta Guy, um, all these fans for coming out. Without you guys, we wouldn't be able to do this. Uh, my mom, my dad, uh, my beautiful wife at home, um, my brother. Um, my grandma's at home. I'm pretty sure they're all watching. Uh, Josh, Johnny, um, Sean LeMasters, um, Mike LeMasters, Kyle, uh, both Kyles. I've got two Kyles, my buddy James, my niece and nephew. I mean, just so many people. Uh, Wins Automotive Products, um, they jumped on board. They're up here in Lakeland. Uh, they jumped on board whenever we went to Mobile uh, a few months ago. So I can't thank them enough. My buddy Kay Lang for lawn service, um, Fury Race Cars. Um, HP Elite Racing Engines, just so many people. Again, thank all these fans for coming out because without you guys, we, we, we wouldn't be able to do this. It takes the village to make these race teams. Thank you for coming out. Dylan Bigley. Taking a look at the car, smoke pouring out. Having to come from seventh. John, a, a first and a second for you tonight. It's going to be a good points day. I know you wanted to sweep the night, but well, all things considered, it was a good, clean night for you. I'm just happy for Dylan Bigley. It, it, I've raced for a lot, a lot of years, and right now I'm just on my hot streak, so... It, it's cool to see a new person come out here and win. He's, his, um, he's got a big race going on with his family, and they're big-time racers, and I'm glad they came out tonight. I, thought, I hope that was a good show for everybody, and hopefully we can keep, keep coming out here and putting on a good show for the fans. Thanks for everybody coming out. It's definitely an exciting race. John Guy gets it done with a first and second tonight. Well, TJ, two third-place finishes for you here tonight. A lot of hard racing there in that second race, but this got to feel good being on the podium twice tonight. It definitely uh, a lot better than uh, the last super race. Last super race, uh, we had rear end issues, but uh, two P3s tonight. Uh, Rick Connect nailed it on the setup. I feel like I think it was up to me to uh, really finish the job. But uh, Cody Brinson does a great job in the spotter stand. Mr. Scott let me drive his car. He does a phenomenal job during the week, and my dad for putting me here. Well, it's been a busy, uh, busy couple of months of racing. You've been racing here, and you've been over to New Smyrna. You went, did, ran a couple of cars tours races. Are you having fun with all this racing you're doing? Absolutely. Uh, the floor, I feel like the Florida racing is just as good as North Carolina racing. Uh, I really can't really tell the difference. Well, it's been fun to watch you, young man. Congratulations on a great run tonight. Thank you. Appreciate it. TJ DeCare brings it home with a third place finish. Two. Matter of fact, one final to go. The 
Mod Minis, Mod Minis will be up next. Go to patreon.com slash speedway video now. And with what we've seen tonight, anything can happen. Fields making their way down the back stretch. They're going to get the green flag on the exit of turn four here, where I believe a cone is still there. I don't know how it survived, but it's still there. Now that you said that, somebody will hit it. Here we go. Green flag in the air. Final event of the night. Chuck Frazier leads us down into turn one. Chuck Frazier out front. Little trying to fight back on the outsider. Nick Cummins side by side for third. Had to back out of it a little bit as the two cars in front of him are pretty close together. He's the guy to watch here. Didn't really have anywhere to go in the heat race. Kind of got boxed in, which has him starting back in the field. He's a little bit loose. Oh, Sally contact. Russian stops right in front of the whole field. Wow, and big Doesn't save for you. Going still. And that's going to be advantage to Nick Cummins. He's able to get up on the outside and get by some of these guys. Gives him some clean racetrack for the first time all night. Two laps in, and oh, Yule sideways again, and oh, Bobby Rowland into the wall. It makes me wonder if there may be some fluid over there, see if we have a next time by, if anybody gets loose up. Yeah, you wonder if somebody threw some grease out either after the late model race or during base laps, or if those cars are just loose. Looks like Yule just might be you loose over there in two. Still side by side for third. Oh, contact with Abney and Yule. Yule still sideways as he battles with, with the Russian in the 91. Is that for fourth? That is the battle for third. Two car breakaway at the front. Frazier and Cummins. Yule, Russian going at it for third. And Ronnie Abney. Chuck Frazier been racing ATVs lately, but when he jumps in at Bob Mini, always fast, but it's hard to hold off 2021 and 2022. Bobby Rowland going up and smoke up. That's motor number two, possibly, for Bobby Rowland this year. And they have these old four bangers wound up, that's for sure. And Rowland with smoke in turn number three comes to rest on the outside wall. And he's already climbing out of that thing. He's out of that thing in a hurry, trying to take a look and see what's going on with car number 19. Tough break for Bobby. It's been a rough night for him. And he's looking underneath the car. So something obviously amiss. And he's hoping for the best over there. Not sure if we have any fluid down. Any word of fluid yet? <clears throat> a safety team on the scene now to check the racetrack and check, see what's going on over there. Get Bobby some assistance off the speedway. And that'll bunch the field back up. A lot of crazy action from about third on back. Chuck Frazier with the lead, but he had a mirror full of the man to beat. Car number two, Nick Cummins. That car don't look like much, folks, but that thing is fast. He certainly run out of places to put those feature winning stickers, for sure, and to build a, a trophy case at home. The, the body rules on these mod minis, you can pretty much do whatever you want. You get some unique looking things. And for a while, it was all Mustangs and Pintos, but now it's turned out to be not quite sure what everything is. Get down on the bottom where you're a little bit less vulnerable. That's, sometimes you have to know your competition. That is a good point, and Nick is a smart racer. Got a fast car. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he's up against. Chuck Frazier going to be sent to lead us back to green. Green flag is in the air. Frazier inside, Russian outside. Russian trying to fight back on the outside down the straightaway, down the back stretch. That is a good launch for the 91 car. Been an eventful day for Tim Russian all the way through with the street stock. And now he's going to lead this lap of the modern mini feature. From the outside lane, Tim Russian in the 91 letting it all hang out as he goes down the back straightaway. Where did this come from? Third place right there, Nick Cummins, just waiting to see what's going to be decided in the front two. Boy, Chuck Frey. Shot on the key. the two there. Are we going to go three it's wide, Ryan? Three wide with Nick Cummins on the bottom. He sends it in there. Frazier backed out of it, but that opened the door for Abney. It does. And Cummins leads that lap. Nick Cummins goes three wide, and Ronnie Abney body slams with Chuck Frazier. Frazier had the cleanest looking car out here until that moment. Ronnie Abney driving hard. That youngster has made quite the improvement. Oh, but the right side body work flapping in the breeze now. The anchors have come unglued on the side of the 64. 
some built-in air conditioning. There you go. Nick Cummins though, out in front. That's bad news for the rest of this field. I don't think I've ever seen Nick Cummins get passed. He does a lot of passing out here when he starts deep in the field, but not many people just get up there and pass Nick Cummins. For sure, he's checked out front now. The battle is shaping up for third again. Frazier wants it back. He's got the door open on the app. He's got the door open now. Frazier's in there. Side-by-side -side battle for that third and final spot on the podium. Frazier on the bottom, Abney on the outside. And Frazier back out in front. Man, that car looked like Chuck Frazier might be the man to beat for the first few laps. That caution kind of reset things here, and he looks a little bit off the pace compared to where he was earlier. Won the heat race. Cummins checked out now, as he normally does here at Auburn. Whoa, Kenny Ull. Dirty bacon cars. Or no, that's Kenny Ull and, and the other... Uh, number 10 car, is that Jason Rendell? Or yeah. Jason Deaton, I think. But yeah. the white kind of Deaton. And Kenny Hill's one of those guys, you don't want to get him fired up, man. He is, he's a character, and when he gets pushed around, he'll often come and give it right Off back to you. Zimmerman on the back stretch, see if he can keep it going. Frazier coming up on him fast. Zimmerman limping around on the outside. Boy, I saw two, and for a second, Thought our leader was in trouble, but it's the other number two, Zimmerman, who's slow on the outside of the racetrack, almost caught the 10 machine. Nick Cummins still leading the way, and we are nine laps to go now, and without a yellow, it's going to be tough to beat Nick Cummins. Zimmerman still limping around out there. Cummins still checked out. It's going to come to a point where Cummins may need to ask the track to put a bounty on him. Whoa, and he comes down right. He's had enough. He pulls off. Nick Cummins had a moment there where he probably hit the panic button for a split second. But he's walking lead. the dog pretty good, so he could probably let off there for a moment. Oh, yeah, he can save his tires at this point. Save he's, them for next week. He's about to Lego land. He is on cruise control, that is for sure, as was expected. Tim Russian, though, having a good run in the 91 car. Chuck Frazier, third. Ronnie Abney, fourth. And rounding out the top ten, Jason, Jason Deaton in the former Dylan Reynolds, number eight. Cummins coming out of turn three and four. Going to get five fingers this time. Let him know that there's five laps to go for Speedy. And he's catching the John Sofield 47. He'll put him a lap down. Pretty clean racetrack now for Nick Cummins. Oh, the ten of Dighton is off the pace. Tough break for the 10. Gonna pull to the infield still. It's all coming. By a straightaway lead. When Jamie Dixon owned that machine and put Dylan Reynolds behind the wheel, it was second place over at New Smyrna at the beginning of the year. And now it's in the infield with just a couple laps to go. Battle heating back up for second. Tim Russian having a great run tonight. He's got a mirror full of Chuck Frazier who's back up on the wheel as they are coming out at two to go. 23 laps complete. Battle for second, lap traffic mixing things up. Russian gonna go three wide as the white flag is out for Nick Cummins. White flag for a second place battle right now. Frazier's got the inside, Russian outside as they go into turn one. Battle gonna go down the back stretch. Give it to Frazier, the advantage can come. Can rush and fight back on the outside. He tries to send it in. Second flag in the air. Oh, Nick Cummins. Nick Cummins. He, he tried to make it. it look close and almost got taken out there in turn one. Oh, man, Nick Cummins made it look close at the end. But let's hear it for Nick Cummins. Still a man to beat out here at Auburndale. As Steve said, going to need some more room for winner stickers on the side of this car. Well, Nick, I appreciate you making it look close there at the end. They almost ran over you in turn number one. But, man, you've got these guys covered. What's your secret right now? Uh, no secrets, man. All these guys know what I do. It's hard work, right? I uh, mean, we make it look easy, but y'all don't understand what I go through at home to make this car this fast. I'm, I'm glad my crew chief, chief came back and decided to help me out for the future. Well, that, that's good news. And, man, you guys make it, you make it look easy, but... Nothing is easy on a race car, and, uh, man, I'm telling you, they're all chasing you. Yeah, I know. I, I, I appreciate Chuck coming out, giving me a run for my money. Um, I'd like to thank uh, APE Auto Engine Performance, my dad, John, my brother, John. Matt came out, my other brother. 
my sisters, my sisters here with her baby, mother. So thanks a lot, everybody, for coming out. Ladies and gentlemen, Nick Cummins, your winner in the Mod Mini feature. We'll kick it over to Steve. Going to have a word back here with Chuck Frazier making his way back out to Auburn LSB. When he's not Ron on ATV, we appreciate you coming back out. Chuck, Chuck put on quite a show out there. Looked like you were going to set sail early on. Got shuffled back to, I think, fourth or so, but able to bring it back up here to top two. Yeah, I did. Uh, I got something going on in the right rear. I guess I cut a tire down pretty early, and uh, it, was, it was a handful to drive. But, uh, hey, listen, um, I'm happy and uh, finished in one piece. It was good racing with uh, Tim and, uh, you, know, had a, you know, had a fun time, and that's what it's all about. This whole deal, the older I get, the more it's about uh, just having a great time. So uh, we're still not there yet. Uh, you know, Nick has still got us all covered, and, uh, but we'll go home and work some more. All right, congratulations. Another solid run for Chuck Frazier in the number seven. Going to send it back to Ryan. Going to have a word with Tiny. There he is. This guy. He's this guy. He took his dart. Hey, third. Let's see the microphone over there. Third place for you tonight. You, you and uh, Chuck had a good battle there for third. So I know y'all are chasing that two car. What's it going to take to get him out of the winner's circle? Well, uh, I was pretty close tonight. We were running side by side, and then he got in front of me and I ended up hitting the, hitting the fence a little bit there, knocking the toe out. But we were gonna, me and Chuck was fixing to have a good race here to the flag stand, but the 47 got in the way. Something about these lap cars. Your lap cars make it tough. Hitting the wall makes it tough, but you survive all that with a solid third place. Anybody you'd like to thank tonight? Yeah, I like the Jeff Bacon, the owner right there. Curtis and Jason, he's over there in that car. He's the one who does all the setup, and there's about 50 people back there that work on all these things, and pretty much just the Dirty Bacon team. There's dirty Bacon up on the podium to end the night. Tim Russian brings it home in third, and we'll wrap it up. Down. Over. We want to thank everybody on route on behalf of Rex and Collette Guy for coming on out here. Please be safe on the way home and enjoy your Memorial Day weekend. First Saturday in June, 40 lap Crown Vic race on tap. Southern Sprint Car Series. Sprint Car is going to be back in action along with a couple other local classes. Um, my name's Steve Darwin and Ryan Stevens and Johnny Mack join me tonight. We appreciate you coming out. Go to patreon.com slash speedwayvideo now.